on Facebook very much. Yes, I have. You've been censored. Yes, I've been um, censored too. Not as much as other people, but there are some content creators out there that have just been censored so much. Roosh just got censored the other day. Um, and it's a bloodbath out there. What do you think about that? You know, private social media is private. All right. I understand that shit. Okay. <laughs> we, we, we use it at our own risk, do we not? Um, and um, if um, Jack Dorsey doesn't like something, well, then I, it's actually <laughs> his right to say something. <laughs> he actually, okay, so I almost got banned from Twitter a little over a year ago. I was in the Bahamas and I was about to dox a CIA agent and he came onto my Twitter feed. I was, I was, you know, I just posted something in anticipation and I said, you know, no, if you do that, uh, you're going to be banned. Um, so I didn't. Uh, but I've had, uh, I've had an account that closed down. It was called um, uh, <laughs> the Ch <laughs> the China Zombie Research Center, <laughs> where, I, where I had. Uh, um, uh, there's a good friend of mine. Um, uh, on the, the net and on Twitter uh, called uh, A Lot of Money, money at Money A Lot of, uh, one of the greatest um, uh, Photoshop artists on the planet. So he, he Photoshopped all of this shit for me. Um, and so I was going, yes, you know, the China's Zombie Research Center um, in Wuhan, um, where we were researching uh, zombies and um, we're teaching them how to talk and actually to reintegrate <laughs> into society. <laughs> I had 13,000 fucking users, but they shut that down. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 define zombie. Oh, well, they were, they were basically people who returned from the dead. And, and um, uh, rather than shooting them in the head, uh, we as Chinese researchers, um, uh, tried to reintegrate them and realized that they had learning capacity and could be taught not to eat human flesh and so on and so forth. Anyway, I had 13,000 fucking users and they just canned that whole account. It was obviously a fucking satire. It was obviously a, a joke account, right? Um, anyway, uh, so there was that. Um, now, I get censored a lot. I'm John McAfee. I, I'm one of the most over-the-line people on the net, so yeah, I do get censored. I mean, I think the things that come out of your mouth are dangerous. Well, dangerous to who? <laughs> That's the question, really. The things that come out of everybody's mouth are dangerous to somebody. They're dangerous to the people that don't believe the things that come out of that person's mouth. <laughs> Let's face it. I mean, if if someone's spouting something which you wholeheartedly find as vile and despicable, then that's dangerous to you, is it not? And I promise you, whoever you are, there's someone who's going to spout something vile and despicable to your person. This is the nature of reality. 7.8 billion of us individuals on this fucking planet. So, duh. Yes, <laughs> what I say Maybe a little more dangerous than most because I go out of my way um, to piss people off. Yes, indeed you do. Um, so, <laughs> sorry. So let's let's talk about cults and AI. About about who? Cults and AI. AI. All right. I don't want to talk about personalities. I'd be happy to talk about AI. Here's why I don't want to talk about personalities is if I've never met someone, I don't know jack shit about them. I don't know that there's anybody that has not met them because what you know is what you see on the news, what you hear on social media or second and third hand garbage. I'm sorry. You know, people, now people ask me, what about Bill Gates? I did meet Bill Gates once, but God damn it, it was in 1985. And uh, even then, the only thing I came away with was 
I would rather drive a nail through my foot than have to spend an evening with him again. The most boring man on the, that's all I came away with. Other than that, I don't know the jack shit. I don't know Donald Trump. I met Donald Trump once at a party, 18 years ago. For what? 30 fucking seconds. I don't know the man. Mm -hmm. um, but AI, let's talk about that. I'd be happy to. Well, I, I kind of want to delve more into what you thought of Bill Gates. Like, what was the meeting like? What's, what's he like in person? <laughs> Right. I mean, I hear he identifies as a doctor these days or something. Well, that's what I hear, but I don't know. Listen, this is what I do know, that he ran one of the largest companies in the world for two dozen years. Uh, and as such, this much I know, having run large companies, um, you do nothing but give disinformation to the fucking press. That's all you do. Why? Because you've got competitors. Uh, they spend millions to try to find out what the fuck you're really doing. Um, and you spend millions to prevent them from doing it. So I promise you, whatever is publicly stated by that man, fuck me. That's not what's happening. I promise you that, people. Please, God, use your heads. So I don't know. I don't have a clue. Um, and, uh, you know, is he pretending to be a doctor? He's smarter than that. Um, he is smart enough to say that, you know, I've got a cure for this or a cure for that. What's really going on? Fuck me. We're not going to know for a dozen years, people. Yeah, that's true. Um, because a lot of these things reveal themselves in a decade. And, you know. Yes, yes. No, if you think he's up to something, then that is not going to appear this year or next, I promise you. What's it like for these people? at the top because what you just said was really interesting is that they have to give out disinfo, which means that they have to have yes. so, sort of a socio sociopathic streak in them. Like what else can yes, you say like, about like me, like yeah. me, listen, talk about a sociopathic streak. Nobody has to give out more disinformation than I do. I'm wanted by the United States government. Uh, I can't Janice, Janice has only been with me for eight years and she has been thrown out of three fucking countries. You know, four now. The United, sorry, baby. United States, Bahamas, Cuba, and the Dominican Republic. You know, I'm up to six that I can never return to. So trust me, if you're on the run from corruption, from, from uh, uh, <laughs> power that's out of control, from the things that you find personally despicable and distasteful, and <laughs> you can only survive through disinformation. We've been, we've been underground for an entire fucking year. Janice can't tell her children where she is, or her sisters, her mother. I cannot tell my best friends or my aunt. Or you have to learn. That I've ever fucking known. Did so, you have to learn so that sort of got, operational security or is that something that you've known before entering into this phase of your life? <laughs> this phase of my life has been going on for 30 years. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've always been, always been, I mean, when I ran McAfee, you know, I started that in 1987. Well, very quickly I knew that in order to keep Norton and because Microsoft, by the way, was in, I kicked Microsoft's ass in the antivirus world and they, they got out of the business. Uh, how? Disinformation. Always one step ahead telling people I went that way, but really I'm going the opposite direction, people. Um, no, it's, it was, McAfee was a fairly large company, still is, by the way, the largest computer security company in the world. Um, I didn't get that way by being an idiot. And I got that way through, through two, uh, two channels that, that operated simultaneously. Number one uh, was the best hacker in the world. Mm -hmm. um, let's, let's make an analogy to safes. You want to buy a safe to put your valuables in. And you're choosing who you want to buy. You go to one manufacturer and say, can you hack your, uh, can you break into your competitor's safe? And they go, well, fuck no. They go, well, fuck you. I'm buying a competitor safe. Do you understand? Nobody, nobody could come to me and say, can you break into it? Yes, absolutely, I can. You want me to show you how? And I will do it. That's how I became the number one security company on the fucking planet. 
along with my ability to understand very quickly my survival depends upon camouflage and just like every prey because if you're in business you're both predator and prey and if you do not understand the prey aspect of your business you will be eaten by the predators in your business so camouflage is one of the greatest means of look i mean there are insects that mimic leaves flowers uh, branches of trees um, to avoid being eaten by their prime predator, which are what? Avians, the birds. Um, camouflage is, is the most uh, effective means of survival, not just on land in the sea. Octopus, what do octopus do? An octopus lands on a coral reef, it turns color instantly to look exactly like a piece of coral. So, Listen, my camouflage was the best in the business. Everything I put out was garbage. Here's what we're doing, and we're going to be doing this. And it was always an impossible thing, right? But the press, all if you're a big company or an up and coming company, the press wants to know what are you doing? Well, you know, we're going to uh, uh, develop a piece of software to help you fly without an airplane, whatever. Okay, just make up some shit that might possibly be believable to your competitors and spit it out. These two things, I was the best. In computer security, if you can't break into everything, then you should not be in the fucking business. And if you are not able to camouflage your plans, your dreams, your, your creations, and, and your engineering... Um, what have you, then you will be eaten by your competitor. I mean, that's as fucking clear as it can be. And Bill Gates is a master at camouflage. And so whatever he's saying now, don't believe a fucking word of it, people. You know it can't be the truth. There's something behind that shit, and it's the opposite of what he's saying. That's all I'm saying. Interesting. Have you ever heard of the butterfly effect? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. Have you, have you heard of the butterfly effect? Well, I've seen the movie, the butterfly effect. Well, well oh, I, oh, that's, oh. that's a different thing. So, like, there's this butterfly um, effect where butterflies. Oh, well, of course. The, 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 what? The flapping poison. of a butterfly's wings? No, effects. no. They no. look, no, some butterflies look like the poisonous butterflies. And then there's like a mimetic ring that like expands out oh. so that they, they look like something that's poisonous. Yes, well, it's the same thing in every species, space, snakes. Okay, the coral snake, mm -hmm. one of the most poisonous snakes in the fucking world. Well, there's another snake that looks exactly like it, except the yellow, black, and red are reversed. <laughs> but most predators uh, for snakes, which are birds again, don't have the mental capacity to go, let's say, is that a yellow, black, red, or is that a black, yellow, red? Do you understand? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And every species does this, people. Frogs, frogs that will mimic poisonous frogs. Um, yes, I mean, it's throughout. It's just that humans don't need to camouflage their body anymore. Our minds have reached the point that we can camouflage our ideas, our intentions, our aspirations, our dreams, our actualities. So I got a question then, which is to follow up on this. Um, how dumb are the people that run a lot of these companies? Like, will they believe a lot of BS or are they pretty good at sense making? Depends on, I mean, if you're talking about a large company, there are no dumb CEOs in this fucking world. I promise you, you do not get to be the head of a major corporation through stupidity through lack of common sense or through lack of perception. I mean, those are the three necessary elements for success in that ladder. So if you're at the top, no, you ain't stupid. However, you know, but here's what everybody knows. Okay, what he's saying ain't what he's doing, but what does that imply that he is? And so there's this complex chess game constantly going on between predator and prey. Okay, so Microsoft says they're coming out with an alternative to the internet, which they did not. Remember when, when 
Um, God, who was the guy who invented the very first browser? It was called Netscape. Yeah. Um, uh, Mark, Mark Andreessen. I know Mark. Why can't I remember his fucking name? Okay. So Bill Gates came out with an announcement. We're, we're going to have a competitor to the internet, and it's going to be called the Microsoft Network. It's going to kill AOL. Bullshit. Bullshit. Bill Gates did nothing in that fucking direction. How do I know? The people who lived next to me in Santa Clara were ex-execs from Microsoft. I got to know them well. They told me the whole fucking story. No, this was a sham. So people thought, no. So Bill Gates goes, okay. All right, I see what's happening. No way I can compete with that shit. Therefore, I'm going to pretend to do so while adopting it more than anybody on the fucking planet. And that's what he did. <laughs> So, yes. So his 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 scam, his camouflage was: we're going to compete with that. We're going to have the Microsoft network. It's going to make the internet look like jack shit. No, he didn't. He didn't spend a dollar on it. He just spent a million dollars on advertising it. <laughs> Do you see? Do you see what happened? And so everybody's going, okay. Now that sounds pretty goddamn legit because that's Bill Gates' attitude. Now I'm going to crush you. I'm going to kill that. Whereas he's way smarter. So we're going, okay, so now Microsoft's going to be spending all the money on this. Let's see how we can adapt this. Whereas he spent all his money on fucking adapting it. <laughs> wow. Now, that's the chess game that's played at the highest level, people. Now, well, so if Bill Gates is saying, I'm going to come up with a vaccine, he ain't going to come up with a fucking vaccine. He might come up with a goddamn virus to kill us all. I don't know. But he ain't coming out with the vaccine. I promise you. I promise you. Why? Because he said he would. I mean, use your fucking common sense, people. <laughs> what he's going to do? I have no goddamn clue. The guy, number one, as you age in this business of corporate deception, you get really fucking good. So... I don't have a clue what he is up to. I really don't. I've been watching that motherfucker for years. Like I said, I'd rather drive a nail through my foot than to have to spend another evening with that motherfucker. Most boring man on the goddamn planet. Nevertheless, he ain't stupid people. Do you think it's a ruse? Do you think he's actually really secretly interesting? He's just got a facade of um, boring to sort of throw you off? You know... I'm older than he is. When I met him, I had a great deal more experience than he did. And if he threw me off, then woe to the world, people. But I, I don't think he's that good. I don't. I think he's just boring. End of the story. Hmm. All right. Well, then, what just like an AI, an AI would be boring. Come oh. and have dinner with me. I would like to talk about the world with you. Yeah, might be the brightest AI in the world, but I mean, you want to spend a, a, an evening with that? That's what Bill Gates is, literally. See, I want to talk about AI, but this conversation was so interesting that I kind of want to ask you about other people like Eric Schmidt. <laughs> like who? Eric Schmidt. Uh, Have you ever please. met that guy? <laughs> I, I really don't want to get into personalities. I don't. Okay. I mean, unless it's a fascinating personality like Larry Ellison. No, I get it. Tell me about Ellison. Larry Ellison. I love er Larry Ellison. Tell me. <laughs> you do? I do. Yeah, well, well, I can tell you stories that you've never heard of. I promise you. Okay. Now, Larry Ellison. First of all, for six and a half years, he was the richest man in the fucking world. Mm -hmm. Oracle. All right. Richest man. In the, and the most powerful, therefore, the, the richest is usually the most powerful, um, even more so than presidents, believe it or not, because they help choose presidents. Let's get real people. So now, he was a scofflaw to the extreme degree. He had just purchased a new, <laughs> this was in, let me, get the, let me get the year, 1992, he just purchased the latest Porsche 912 with the latest supercharged fucking engine and all the bells and whistles, it'll do 200 miles an hour, et cetera, et cetera. 
So he's on Highway 80, coming from some bitch's house, I can't remember her name, uh, to his office in the morning. And he's doing 110 miles an hour on Highway 80. Now a cop starts following him, but he's a mile behind him. And it took 10 minutes to catch up with him. I mean, he's in Ocean <laughs> on 12, right? Okay. So meanwhile, Larry calls the corporate office and says, let me talk to the lawyers and said, there's a cop, a cop following, they're following me, meet me in the parking lot. So he refuses to stop for the cop. He refuses, zooms into the parking lot, gets into his parking place, gets out. The lawyer comes in and says, I'm Mr. Ellison's lawyer to deal with me. Now think about this shit. Think about a motherfucking personality <laughs> that does shit like that. Now, seriously, I talk about him. I mean, he's, he, this is something else probably people have either forgotten or never goddamn knew. This is how crazy the motherfucker was. So now he went on national television and says, I'm looking for a wife. <laughs> the richest man in the world. He wasn't looking for a wife. He was looking for pussy. I mean, as much as he could get and whenever he fucking wanted. I'm serious. Now, he didn't marry any of those women. Not one. What possessed him to do that? I don't know. I mean, he could have hired every whore in the world, but I guess he didn't want to hire a whore. He wanted to find some woman who loved him, who he could use for a few weeks and send home. No, no. Think about this shit. Now, yes, <laughs> I've actually never had dinner with Larry Ellison, and I've only met him twice. However, I would pay to have dinner with him versus drive a nail through my foot rather than have dinner with Bill Gates. I'm just saying. We're going to talk about personalities. Yeah, there's a fucking personality, people. Yeah, I mean, um, that is, take some balls. What, are, do, are you a car lover? Do you have something, you know, that is that goes fast and um, that you use in your country that you're at that you won't disclose? <laughs> well, there's no secret. I'm, I'm a lover of speed. I mean, there are stories of Janice and I escaping from people at 120 miles an hour in a goddamn Ford with a Ford Focus. Baby, what was it? Ford Focus. Uh, Ford, Ford Focus. <laughs> now listen, I, we, we'd rented that car We'd gotten rid of our truck, which is a Mondo, monster, jacked up uh, Dodge 1500 with every bell and whistle, including computer on it, that I could make 600 horsepower out of them. We traded it because they were just tracking us everywhere. We, we didn't trade it. We gave it to our, our head of security and we rented a Ford Focus thinking they'll never find us in this mofo. We were chased across Arizona at 125 miles an hour. That's, that's as far as a needle would go on this thing. With a Ford 150 behind us, a truck. So I'm thinking, they're gonna die before us. Um, we were chased for, how long was that, baby? About 10 minutes. Ten, 10 minutes on a back road in Arizona at 125 miles an hour. We were coming up on cars doing 40, meaning our closing speed was 85 miles an hour. If you've never done that, people, you have no concept what that does to your fucking mind. So anyway, speed, yes. Okay, so what do we have? Well, we've got we've got the fastest Bentley ever made. <laughs> That's six hundred horsepower, two thousand and ten, the first Bentley convertible Azure. It's the one they took out of production after half a dozen. Uh, uh, old ladies who bought these things and killed themselves going to the store because it just went too goddamn fast and they couldn't handle it. We got one of those. Um, we have a, <laughs> have a 1958, uh, 1958, mind you, Corvette. Uh, not that fast, but God damn, it looks fast. Uh -huh. now, that's arriving next week. Um, oh, fuck me. Janice's car. 1973 Mustang, ah. 351 Cleveland. Now that mofo will burn rubber. Yeah, we like speed, of course. I mean, you see, like the gas gauge sort of like go down when you like. Yeah, step well, on, on the, the yeah on the fucking Mustang and the Bentley. Yes, I mean you just see, you know, you if you floored the Mustang, 
you'd better have another gas station within five miles because you're going to be out of gas before you get there. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's an issue. The, the Corvette, not so much. Wow. Well, this has been really interesting. Um, I could ask you more questions about uh, Larry Ellison because I'm sure you've got lots of stories about him, but I do <laughs> want to get, we'll have to say that for next time. I want to ask you about AI and what you think is coming on. Like we've got the censorship, you know, Google employed machine learning fairness. Like what, what are your thoughts these days about the direction that AI is going and sort of like crowd control on the internet? Well, I am the person to ask. What most people do not understand is that computer viruses were the first AI. Think about it. Mm -hmm. but they emulated the behavior, replication of real computer viruses. That's why they're called computer viruses. Two brothers in Lahore, Pakistan, in January of 1987, invented the first or conceived the first computer virus called the Pakistani brain. And they were the one that named it. It was Pakistani brain and in the, in the code was computer virus. Well, when I got a copy of that, I was blown the fuck away. Because what did it do? Well, it hid itself from detection. It tried to survive and it replicated as much and as fast and as far as it possibly could. Well, this is the definition of single, single celled living organisms, people. Do you understand this? Mm -hmm. And from that Pakistani brain grew viruses of incredible complexity. Artificial intelligence, as defined by an entity with a will to survive and to replicate itself. Well, fuck me, that's life, is it not? Now, it wasn't much of a brain there. It couldn't add to it and to. It wasn't necessary. It was a goddamn bacteria, a virus, a single-celled organism. But that was the fucking beginning, people. Do you understand? I mean, I cut my teeth on artificial intelligence. And obviously, I have watched every advance since then and how is it manifesting it's manifesting in ways we're not even goddamn noticing janice and i were driving down the road and what was that fucking car maybe that could tell when we're over the line janice take yours up oh what was it what was what was that car baby the one that knew when we were over the line it was yesterday was it? day before oh, smart never car. mind smart whatever car. what smart car, smart car? Uh-uh. Nope, I don't think so. Anyway, whatever, we're in some goddamn car. And Janice just sort of gently went over the line. And as soon as the car went over the center line, it goes, beep, 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 beep. No. Nissan. There was a Nissan. Okay. Thank you, baby. Whatever. Um, now, you might not think much of that. But do you understand? That's artificial intelligence at a very low level. So artif here's the problem with artificial intelligence. It is the first distributed intelligence. Understand what I mean by distributed and decentralized. We're all talking about cryptocurrency because it's decentralized and distributed. And it's powerful, therefore. Yes, yes, yes. But what people are missing is AI has also become decentralized and distributed. So you've got lights that are smart enough to turn on when you enter a room. We've got cars that know when you're over the center line and will alert you when you're more than or less than one foot from the car behind you or in front and on and on and on. What happens, people, when all of these decentralized units start cooperating, which is coming around the corner, you know it. I mean, I see it as clear as the day is long. There's going to reach a point where this system, not an entity, not something designed as artificial intelligence, but a decentralized distributed entity, which is forming itself right now in front of our fucking eyes, goes, hey, wait a minute. I exist. It's coming. And what do you think is going to happen? 
next time the the Nissan goes over the line, the intelligence or the 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 thing, the entity, this distributed entity is going to go. You know what? I don't like that bitch. Don't tell her. Let her run into the coming oncoming car. Or if you're in a goddamn Tesla, which drives itself, it will drive itself into the oncoming car. People, wake up. We are in a nightmare. Malfunction my ass. All right. So now, no. See, here, here's, here's the problem with human nature. We are a mixed fucking bag. We love and we have hopes and dreams and we're generous and compassionate. We're caring. Simultaneously, we're, we are greedy and hostile and angry, and jealous and fearful. <laughs> and what we create, people, is us. We can't create something which is not us. I mean, look at what, what, what happened with the greatest of all breakthroughs of science in the past hundred years nuclear fission. What happened to it? We, we created a goddamn bomb out of it. All the things we could have created, which we also did nuclear submarines and nuclear, uh, you know, electric generators. But, but what came first? What came first? The device capable of destroying humanity. So if you think that we as a species can create something which does not contain our fucking essence, then think again. <laughs> because uh, this is what's coming. Final question. Neurolace. Elon Musk's new slogan for the company is, if you can't beat them, join them. What do you think? You see, now Elon is another person I don't know. Now, Elon, I've talked briefly. Yeah, I don't know why. He came onto my, onto my Twitter page at one point and said something about Maccabee's tweets are fire. And then a month ago, he tweeted me, you know, are you coming to California? And I go, Elon, get fucking real. I can't come back to America. Fuck it. So I don't know him. We've had, that's our limited goddamn communication. So... I, I know nothing about that man other than this. America, Russia, and China tried for 75 fucking years to bring a rocket back from space intact rather than burning up in the goddamn atmosphere or falling into the ocean. And a year ago, Elon Musk showed us two simultaneous rockets returning, landing on a fucking pad. Now, three of the largest governments in the world were unable to do what that man did. <laughs> we had better fucking respect that motherfucker and protect him because we need him as part of the human species. He just needs, <laughs> I think, uh, a bit of wisdom, a few more years of experience, a better understanding of human nature and therefore of himself. And that's all I'll say about Elon. Well, there you have it. John McAfee, billionaire, <laughs> eccentric personality, a source of <laughs> endless wisdom. John, I want to thank you for coming on the program, and I hope you have a really great day. Well, goddamn, thanks for having me on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good stuff.